Casting Shadows by J. S. Pyle Narrated by Dr. Christopher Pyle Chapter 1 The Funeral The sun was shining brightly high above St. Lucia's steeple. The old stone church was just another grey building standing against the backdrop of a pale blue sky. The brightness of the day did nothing to help fight against the icy chill from the February wind, where a small congregation had gathered in the graveyard. The wind continued to howl menacingly around the old headstones, the naked trees shuddering in its grasp. The morning light was glistening through the bare branches and casting shadows onto the frost-covered ground. A group of mourners, all dressed in black, were huddled around an open graveside. Their heads were bowed, either in sorrow or just against the biting wind, perhaps it was a little of both. The funeral inside the church had been a simple affair. It consisted of a few Bible readings from the priest, a slightly comedic speech from an old friend about their days together on the golf course, followed by the hymn All Things Bright and Beautiful, being sung by the congregation. When the service had come to an end, the group had reluctantly left the warmth of the church for the icy cold of the graveyard. Everybody gathered around the graveside to say their final farewells to a good man. Robert Jones, 9th of December 1946 to the 26th of February 2017, beloved husband and dearest friend, rest in peace. The engravings on the polished headstone stood out boldly against the dark marble in which it was carved into. The bold letters would inform all future visitors vaguely about the life of the man soon to be buried beneath. A coffin made of dark mahogany sat snugly in the hollowed-out grave, its chrome finishings reflecting the sunlight as it bled through the trees. The reflection was already beginning to fade, as the priest threw a handful of earth onto the coffin and sullied its surface whilst he spoke. We therefore commit this body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. The priest continued with his sermon, his voice strong as he addressed the crowd. Although he addressed many, his gaze was firmly directed at only one person, as if his words were meant for her alone. Lydia Jones, the widow, was only a short woman, but she held herself strong, even whilst consumed with her current grief. Dressed all in black, she kept her head held high, the wind whipping her scarf back around her neck and stinging at her cheeks. By her side stood Susanna, Lydia's only child. Their arms were locked together, Susanna's gloved fingers rubbing patterns gently over her mother's arm in a gesture of silent support. The ceremonial vase was passed between the relatives, each taking a handful of earth and using it to dust the top of the coffin. Finally, the vase was handed over to Lydia, the crowd looking on with silent encouragement as she reached inside the vase. She clasped her hand around the slightly damp soil, tossing it into the gaping hole before her. Fresh tear tracks were now running down her face as the action was completed. Though he may now be gone, he will never be forgotten. Though he may be absent, his presence will forever be with us, in our memories and in our hearts. Now in my father's house, his soul will forever be home, and we lay his body down for eternal rest. The priest recited, while silence consumed the congregation. He continued, Please each take a moment of silence to say goodbye in your own way. The family has also asked me to invite and welcome you all back to Lydia's house for a drink, and to continue the celebration of Robert's life. Thank you. He then stepped back from the grieving crowd to give them all some privacy. Gradually the congregation began to diminish, as the people desperately sought the warmth of their cars and protection from the vicious wind. Soon only the immediate family remained. Susanna was still holding tightly onto her mother's arm, and seeing fresh tears welling in her eyes, she quickly pulled Lydia into her comforting arms. It's okay, Mum, I've got you, Susanna whispered softly. Lydia returned the hug, wrapping her arms tightly around her daughter's back and resting her chin on her shoulder. From where she stood she could see far across the graveyard, thousands of headstones, each marking another grave and another life that had been lost. Just like my Robert, she thought sadly. Robert's death had come as a devastating shock to Lydia. There had been no prior warning signs, no lingering cough or any suspicious aches and pains. Despite his age, Robert had always been in good health, keeping himself busy in the garden or playing golf down at his local golf club. 
He had always kept himself fairly fit, and as far as Lydia knew, he had never even set foot in a hospital. So, before that fateful night, Lydia had no reason to believe anything could be wrong with him. It's cruel how someone's fate can change so quickly, disrupting an otherwise happy and tranquil existence in just mere moments. The tragedy had occurred only three weeks earlier. The day that Robert passed away had come along just like any other. Lydia had awoken that morning to the melodious sound of birds tweeting in the garden, with the first rays of light creeping their way through the bedroom curtains. The room was pleasantly warm as Lydia yawned and stretched, almost cat-like, before sitting herself up in bed. The aroma of freshly brewed coffee had meandered its way through the air to Lydia's nose, and a knowing glance at her bedside table revealed a still steaming mug sat waiting for her. The morning coffee was a daily occurrence, a simple gesture from her beloved husband to show he cared. Robert always awoke before Lydia, his golfing habits having conditioned him well for early morning starts, whereas Lydia had never been one to rise before the sun. Yet, with the taste of coffee still lingering on her lips, Lydia was soon rising, getting herself dressed and welcoming in the new day. She descended the stairs of her home with surprising agility for a woman of her age, entering the kitchen and immediately searching through the fridge for bacon. It was a Sunday morning tradition for Lydia and her husband to share a home-cooked breakfast together. Nothing fancy, just simple bacon, eggs and toast, but Lydia took great pleasure in preparing it for her husband. With several strips of bacon sizzling in a frying pan, Lydia took a peek behind the net curtain that veiled her kitchen window. The sight that greeted her eyes brought a swell of jubilation to her heart. For, outside in the back garden, she could see her Robert. He was confidently marching across the lawn, his mighty electric mower held firmly within his grasp, cutting through the overgrown winter lawn, trimming it down to a more acceptable length. Lydia enjoyed watching him work. He always took great care of their garden, and would spend many hours tending to the lawn and flower beds, no matter what the weather was like. He resembled an artist, whittling away at his never-ending masterpiece. But the recent winter had been a long and hard one, not allowing Robert much opportunity to nurture his beloved garden. That was until today, for on this seemingly innocent Sunday morning, the sun had finally broken its way through the clouds, and despite the cool bite of the February breeze, Robert was determined to make the most of this glorious bright and sunny day. Lydia patiently watched him work with a pleasant smile, taking time to carefully cook the eggs just the way Robert liked them. He favoured a runny yolk. This enabled him to submerge his buttered strips of toast into the golden-coloured nectar, whereas Lydia much preferred her eggs to be more thoroughly cooked, certainly no runny yolk leaking onto the plate. Once the meal was ready to serve, Lydia would gently tap her fingers against the window pane, catching Robert's attention, and he would down his tools to join her to eat at the kitchen table. Breakfast time would come and go as it did every Sunday morning, and whilst they were enjoying their breakfast, the happily married pair would discuss the events of the world whilst reading the daily newspaper. Later that day, as Lydia was busying herself working through a mountain of ironing that she had neglected throughout the previous week, Robert announced that he was going out. He entered the kitchen dressed in his padded winter coat, his scarf encasing his neck, and promptly kissed his wife upon her cheek. And, with that, Robert was out the door, even before Lydia could question his intentions. He had simply said that he was going out on an errand, but Lydia suspected he was truly sneaking away to join some of his friends at the local pub. There was an important football match being played that afternoon. Robert's favourite team were playing against their rivals. Lydia was well aware of the event, as she had just read about it in the newspaper earlier that day. She had no doubt a cheeky pint with his friends was Robert's true goal for the afternoon. In truth, Lydia didn't mind him going at all. Historically, Sundays had always been their day, a chance for them to spend quality time together amidst their constantly busy lives, especially way back when they had both been working. It was an unspoken rule that they would spend as much of the Lord's Day together as possible. But, now that Robert had retired, they were able to enjoy more freedom, with the pair spending practically the whole of each day together. That is, when Lydia was not tucked away working, and, as such, their special Sundays were starting to become a little less notable. So, if Robert wanted to spend his Sunday elsewhere, then that was truly fine with Lydia. 
they would still enjoy an early evening roast dinner together upon Robert's return. And that is how it was, with Robert arriving home with precision timing, just as the potatoes were starting to crisp inside the oven. The cottage was filled with the wonderful aromas of home cooking, the meat roasting and vegetables bubbling away in a pan upon the stove. Robert greeted his wife with a gentle kiss as he burst through the door of their home, his lips cold due to the frosty early evening air outside. Unbeknownst to both, that kiss would be the last they would ever share. As always, their private feast was consumed and thoroughly enjoyed in a tranquil and peaceful atmosphere, but this peace was not to last. It was merely an hour or so later, as Lydia and Robert were sat in their individual armchairs, like the king and queen of their own little haven, that things started to take a downward turn. As the pair were watching television, Robert suddenly felt a sharp discomfort in his chest. The pain soon escalated to a tightness around his lungs and a persistent ache within his core. Robert had then risen from his chair, pacing back and forth in small steps around the living room, hoping the movement alone would cure his pain. It wasn't long before he was finding it difficult to breathe, and he dropped down to his knees, falling as though he had been struck by a heavy blow. His hand was held tightly to his chest, his fingers trembling as he feebly tried to breathe and force some air into his lungs. There was nothing Lydia could do except watch her husband's plight. She was unable to aid him and powerless to cease his suffering. As Robert collapsed to the floor, limp and lifeless like a rag doll, Lydia lunged for the phone. She immediately called for help as quickly as her aging and shaking fingers could press down the numbers. It was all to no avail. Lydia had been sitting on the floor of her living room, Robert's head cradled in her lap as she waited for the ambulance to arrive. Her hands alternated between hovering over his motionless body and running soothingly through his silver hair, overwhelmed by shock. The ambulance arrived at their door about fifteen minutes later, but Robert had passed away long before its arrival. Lydia finally began to weep uncontrollably as the paramedics removed Robert's body. She continued sobbing as they took him from the cottage knowing that he would never return. It was a night that Lydia would remember and be haunted by forever, and by dawn the following day she had no more tears left to cry. Lydia's throat was now dry and her eyes were sore, and she could weep no more. The doctors had later concluded that Robert had suffered a massive heart attack, and that there was nothing they could have done to have saved him. Knowing that her inaction could not have changed his fate brought little comfort to Lydia, she felt like a candle had been blown out, lost to the winds, and its bright and glowing light would never return. Just like that, Robert was gone from Lydia's life forever. Still looking out across the graveyard, Lydia's head was swimming as she thought about all the other graves around her and the people that they belonged to. What had led them here, and did they all have time to say goodbye, were just a few of the questions to cross through Lydia's mind. It was then, Whilst she was still distracted by her thoughts, her vision blurred with unshed tears that she caught a glimpse of a distant lone figure. A woman appeared to be walking slowly between the gravestones, her movements shaky and unsteady, as if she was stumbling rather than striding. The figure seemed featureless from a distance, viewed as nothing but a blur of grey amongst the other overwhelmingly dull colours of the graveyard. Lydia only caught a momentary glance of the figure, before her view was totally obscured by her tears. She then waited for the woman to reappear further down the path, but she never did. Lydia could only assume that the woman must have stopped to pay her respects at one of the graves, or perhaps Lydia had never actually seen her at all. She then pushed the vision from her mind, putting it down to a mere trick of the light and the stress of the day upon her exhausted mind. Gently, Lydia untangled herself from Susanna's grasp and wiped her eyes ungracefully upon the back of her hand to clear her vision. "'Come on, Mum. Let's get you to the car. It's freezing out here,' Susanna stated. They locked arms once more, and began to make their way back towards the church, each of Susanna's steps falling unsteadily as her high heels met the uneven stone path. Ahead of them both, Lydia could see that the priest was waiting for them. Lydia knew how the conversation was going to unfold before he even began to speak. The priest began by promising that Robert would be looking down upon her from heaven. He continued his speech by not so subtly hinting for her to make a donation to the church. 
Why is it that church roofs are always in a state of disrepair? Lydia almost scoffed. Disinterestedly, she ignored his fake promises and bit her tongue to contain her comments. The church had always been Robert's belief, not hers. He may not have regularly attended church, at least not in recent years, but he had always said his prayers each night before retiring to bed. She had never joined him in prayer, and sometimes even teased him about it. He had often labelled her a sceptic and promised that one day he would convert her, but they both knew that would never happen. It wasn't that she did not like the idea of a religion or having something to believe in, it was just that Lydia simply knew better. Luckily, the priest did not linger for long, prompted either by the miserable weather or by the look of annoyance on Lydia's face, he retreated to the sanctuary of his church. Either way, she was relieved to see the back of him. Christian, are you coming? Susanna called back to her husband, when she noticed her own family's absence. Lydia took the moment to look back towards the graveside, where her son-in-law and teenage granddaughter Jessica still resided. Christian turned, shouting out a reply to his wife. However, Lydia didn't catch his words. Instead, her attention had been completely grasped by Jessica. The girl's face was sickly pale and her eyes wide open as she stared off into the distance of the graveyard, seemingly transfixed by nothing but open space. Jess, sweetie, are you okay? Christian questioned, sounding concerned. He placed a hand on his daughter's shoulder, hoping to gain her attention. You look like you've seen a ghost, he added with a nervous chuckle, hoping to break the tension. Luckily, his words seemed to break Jessica out of her trance, but the girl continued to ignore him. Instead, she pulled her coat tighter against herself, hoping to stop the cold from seeping further into her bones. She turned to Lydia anxiously. Can we go home, please? Jess asked her grandmother abruptly, a small hopeful smile gracing her features. Of course we can, honey, Lydia replied, holding her hand out for Jessica to take. I have some hot chocolate back home that will warm us all up, she promised. They all began to amble along the path back to Christian's car, Lydia and Jess still hand in hand, a few steps ahead of Susanna and her husband. Do you want to tell me what happened back there? Lydia prompted quietly as they approached the car. She was curious as to what could have caused her granddaughter to react in such a peculiar manner. Jessica slightly paled again at her grandmother's questioning. Cautiously, she took a glance to ensure her parents were still a few paces behind and out of earshot, before leaning in and whispering directly into her grandmother's ear. Lydia's breath caught in her throat, and goosebumps began to prickle on her skin as the words sank in, words that would surely haunt her for days to come. Grandma, I saw her too, Jessica whispered. <laughs>